Oh, yeah. We're recording now, right? Right? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, shh. This kind of music when you play when you get out of the shower and you know you're going out, you know? It's one of the happy go out. Am I? It's set. Like she ain't gonna set you up, and you know it. Like maybe she's waiting downstairs for you. And you're like, oh, here we go. You know what I mean? You put on your nice pair of drawers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, oh, it's gonna be the night. You know? I like this. And this, this song dropped when, Malik? When did the song drop? An hour ago. Man, I get the freshest music that doesn't cost us. How great is that? I don't cost the company anything. How great am I? I'm cost efficient, bruh. And I'm paying you guys. I, I, I mean, seriously, who's winning here? <laughs> anyway, it's BT with Tales from the Gemini. Today, today I am so happy, man. I'm, um, well, in a way, I, it, it's, you could tell the fall's in the air. It's a little cooler. And I don't like it, but I know Malik likes it because it's the fall. But I hate the fall because, you know, everything, it gets dark around 3.30, and I hate it. I really do. I, everybody, else, everybody likes the fall except for me. I don't like the sweater weather. I like hot but anyway, but uh, this fall, though, there's going to be racing in the fall, which is great. And I tell you what, we're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right on it with uh, this. I'm going to introduce the video, and then we're going to bring these guys up. But this, this is who I'm talking to today. I'm talking to Christian Daniel Jr., and I'm letting him bring himself on. So hit that video so people can watch. This is Christian Daniel Jr., and this is what interview. I'm Christian Daniel. I like racing motorcycles a lot. I'm not scared of getting hurt when I ride. Um, yeah, because you ain't got no bones. Um, when you, He's like when five. Scared, I mean, of you, course you ain't scared. scared. Kind of, when you fall, it's kind of being like a baby. Like when he falls down and he cries. So I don't want to be that kind of Christian. I want to be brave Christian, like a guy battles a bear. I want to be that kind of Christian. In five days, I'll be jumping on a plane to start the journey of moving our whole family across the world so that our eight-year-old can follow his dreams. I remember the exact moment when that spark lit. He met a world champion, and when the trip was over, he looked at me and told me, I want to race motorcycles. That's it. Let's bring him up. To I told him, let's do it. The four years that followed were filled How with great is that? an incredible I guess bring him up. Let's bring the dad up and the family. Hopefully, Christian. Christian Daniel, Christian Daniel Jr., how great is that? Let's bring him up. Uh, we got him? We got him on the line? Oh, let me see. Oh, I, I, that's my favorite part when I see, the, when I see that, because I know they're, they're coming on. Yeah. Uh, is that them? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Oh, there, that's it? Are we in? We're in? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, Lee. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Good. We showed your first uh, part of the clip, you know, the one, hi, I'm Christian you know, Daniel Jr. I want to be a motorcycle racer. I'm not going to be, yeah, basically you said I'm not going to be a little, you know, wimp. Oh, you know, I'm not scared of nothing. I ain't scared of falling. I'm about to be MotoGP champion. You can't do nothing about it. We showed that link, you know. Bas <laughs> uh, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what you meant. So, man, how you guys doing? How's everything over in, in Barcelona? Good. Good, <laughs> man. Hola, hola, hola. Mm -hmm. Buenas noches. <laughs> man i think you know i think people know the story and i always hate you know reiterating everything but for the people who don't and are just you know coming and say who is this guy he's talking about whatever if you can briefly just give me a brief synopsis a brief synopsis i know it was four when you met the motorcycle jesus as i call him uh which, which is mark marquez you took him to coda for his first ever moto gp race now, even mm -hmm. as a grown man, if you've never seen a MotoGP race in person, you will be like, <gasps> and when you see <laughs> Mark Marquez, it's incredible. So I saw the video link, and he had that look in his eye that I always have the look in my eye, except for security comes after me. But you got to <laughs> <laughs> meet Mark. So what was that like? And tell me everything from that. Uh, I mean, I don't really remember now. Of course, you're four. Of course, that was seven years ago. <laughs> <laughs> At seven, you're 11 now, and you were four years old, and he doesn't remember. That's a bad memory. Every year four. So what happened? If, if what you can't remember, what happened? Uh, I went an hour, okay. and I fell asleep in a car, and I remember eating some pasta, and, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. So so th that how that all happened, I actually, that the money to pay for that trip uh, was paid for because – me and my wife were supposed to go to Italy, you know, romantic vacation. Hey. Uh, we got pregnant with our second son. 
So she couldn't, by the time that time came, she couldn't go. So we bought, she's like, just take Christian to a MotoGP race. You guys can go. Maybe Rossi will retire. Uh, you know, that was around that time. We weren't sure it was going to happen. Seven years ago, you thought he was going to retire. <laughs> you remember, remember because like he was having his Ducati. She's like, it was just a, a yes. strange time. And I was like, you know, I want to go see Rossi before he retires. And uh, so we went and, you know, it was, it was fantastic. And we were back there and we didn't know who Mark Marquez was at that time. Cause we hadn't really followed Moto2 and Moto3 prior to that like super close um so i think we we met him without even knowing that he was a superstar um and we we're trying to get a picture and as you saw he picked christian up and that's before he even won anything so that was before he was like the sensation you know right um and yeah we, we saw him there he took the picture it was super cool and actually we stalked him i i, I i'm a, like you i'm a stalker <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for including me in that. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah you know, I know, you, you know, so, I know, so low, low key. No, but we, um, so I realized that a lot of the riders were going to this restaurant in Texas called Fogo de Chao. Yes. Um, yeah, which is Brazilian steak. Fantastic. Yeah. So me and four-year-old Christian at this super fancy restaurant, we're sitting there waiting for MotoGP to show up. Uh, and we actually ran into Rossi there and Jeremy Burgess and Marquez popped up on a super casual level after he won. Uh, and it was cool. He doesn't remember, but he was like, I don't know. He, he I don't know. Tell me. He went there like three times. That's why I don't remember. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah, all that, that money be... spent. See, that, that's the aggravation of being a parent. He spent all yep. that money on you. They're supposed to be in Italy having another a romantic adventure. Matter of fact, she's probably going to have a, a third kid. And yep. But because she couldn't go, you went to MotoGP, and you don't even remember that. That's the frustrating part of being a parent. Oh, he spent over three cold. Gs on you, and you go, I don't remember. That would make me <laughs> so mad. Thank you, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll be the, I'll be the, uh, I'll be the stepdad he wishes he'd never had right now. <laughs> All that money you spent, you go. I don't remember anything. I mean, I was like, I got the pictures, but I guess it was cool. Yeah. No, do you really remember any of that stuff? No. I much. remember some of it. Yeah. No, okay. he. he yeah. So, so here, yeah. So here's the thing. Now I know about him now, but to get to him, I gotta go to you, pops. Now, were you, were you, did you, did you ride growing up? Did you race? Did you want to race? What was your background? Yeah, that's interesting. So um, I, I remember when I was about four years old, my uncle had a Kawasaki Ninja, you know, back in the early 80s. Um, and he yes. was, most, and so like, it was a bright green, you know, just super. So he used to ride me around on his, on the tank of his bike, just riding me around the neighborhood. Um, and I remember looking at a, a small statue he had of somebody dragging their knee. And I, it just didn't make sense to, to me at that time. Like, how is that possible? How, right. how can somebody be on a motorcycle? Um, and then I watched a lot of motocross as a teenager, um, and I got my first bike when I was 18. I had to like save my own money up and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to race, but it just wasn't a it wasn't something that was realistic for my family. My dad was like, "No, nah, man, like it's not gonna happen." So, yes, <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "It's just not an option." So, <laughs> you know, so I rode like a, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like most of us are people. Man, I wish my dad would do what you're doing for your son. I was like, I wish my dad. And my dad was fantastic. I love him to death. Exactly. But, like, he just was like, it, it wasn't even, I don't, it, it's a huge sacrifice. So I understand why, you know, he was just like, ah, um, yeah, no, that was it, man. And so like, I think around 18, I, I just, because I was riding motorcycles and going to bike nights and stuff, I, I started getting even heavier into MotoGP and um, became a huge fan. I was right around the time of Rossi, like the early 2000s when he was like insanely dominant and right. making MotoGP super entertaining. Um and yeah, I just fell in love with that. I followed it ever since. And then um, I did a few track days and, and you know, I, I kept riding motorcycles and kept within the motorcycle community. Um, and when, uh, not hitting the apex, Faster. Remember when Faster yes. came out? Yes, yes. So when Faster came out, he was about two and I bought that movie. Uh, actually, I think we went to a theater and watched it in the theater. Um, but I bought the DVD and he at age two would sit all the way through Faster multiple times. And you a two-year-old. As a two-year-old, yeah. So you know he, so you knew it had to be in his blood, in his bones. As a two, if you can get a two-year-old to sit through yeah. anything, yep. that, that that's not uh, that's not one of those uh, things on Nickelodeon, or whatever. Yeah. You, like you yeah. know, you got something going there. No, so funny story. Like it, a lot, my wife always pokes at me saying, like you, you planned all this. You know, this is all part of something that you had in your head. You know, uh, because actually, when when um when she was pregnant with him, we went to Laguna Seca for MotoGP. She was like super early pregnant. Right. Uh, I don't think we, I don't think we even knew, we didn't know she was pregnant when we were there. We found out when we got back. <laughs> there so, you go. That was a good weekend. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, no. So, so before we went, like I used to produce music as a hobby and I wanted him to play music. I just, 
the same as my dad, like a motor, being a motorcycle racer, especially from America, just wasn't a thing I thought was possible, you know? Right. Um, and leading up to the, the weekend of going to MotoGP when we met Mark Marquez, he couldn't even ride a bike yet at that time, like a bicycle. He wasn't just, he, he couldn't, I, I was just, it wasn't a, in my mind. He's like, I was like, he can't ride a bike. Right. Like, he's going to be a MotoGP champion or, you know, we're not going to be on this path. Um, I'm not even joking, man. We, we went to, to MotoGP. We were in some, like, Yamaha um, memorabilia, like, merchandise cart. Right. A little Strider, oh, little push yeah. bike. Remember that yes. little? He, he hopped on the push bike, and he would not get off of it. The, <laughs> oh, he threw a proper tantrum in the middle of MotoGP. I want to take this home. And I'm like, I low-key, I was like, we got to put it back. But I, I, bought, I bought it and had them ship it to my house because we were in Texas and we're from uh, California. Okay. So I bought it as a surprise and shipped it to the house. Nice. And I'm joking, like, when we got back home, like, I could not stop him from, from being on two wheels. It That's was, beautiful. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah, that. I really, I lo- and, I, like, and like you said, I don't know – yeah, if he can re- relate, it's that when you said that, it, then that resonates so deep with me because as a kid, growing up, you know, I mean, people don't realize, some people get in trouble for saying stuff now that, well, when you grew up, it just was what it was back then, and we didn't know yeah. any better, and my dad, as great as he is, I mean, he, we, didn't, we didn't want for anything. We had the greatest mm-hmm. Christmases, the greatest birthdays, and he gave me a motorcycle, I think, when I was in third grade, and, but I, but, and we went to watch a motorcycle race when I was five, and I remember going... <laughs> And there's a kid on, on the grid when they dropped the gate. It was a little motocross race. And I said, you know what? I can beat that kid now. But I knew at five, I said, my dad's not going to drive me around with the motorcycle in the back. And even then, he goes, you're damn right I wouldn't have. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. and so it, was, it always it just burned in my heart. And so, you know, I let the dream just kind of like, eh. And then, man, when I moved here to Indianapolis in 2006, it's like it ignited back in me. Like I, mm. I, I, some guy let me ride his Jixxer around the, in the block, and it was a Jixxer 750, and it was so powerful. I was like, oh, my Ooh. God. But, man, Ooh. after that, uh, the, it re- it, it's, like, it's like seeing that girl at the club, that, that love at first sight girl, and all of a sudden she's gone. And you go, oh, man. And you kind of like, I wonder what happened to that girl. And you see her again, you go, I'm not letting her go. I'm out, it's I'm 100%. Out right now. Yeah, I'm 100%. either going to stalk her until I have to go to prison or <laughs> we're going to make this work. And so, man, and that's how it was. To me, I don't understand yeah. how people cannot ride a motorcycle and not be addicted. I mean, I mean that's just me. And I'm being dead serious. Yeah. I'm re- I know you knew had to remember the old Eddie Lawson replicas, yeah. the, the GPZs, yeah. the, the LTD 440s. And yeah. I just remember that, man. And, and so when I saw you guys, and I think that's what resonated, and I'm not even afraid to say it, it's that, I, you know, I love everybody I interview, but the fact that you guys are African-American, it just, it, it hit a, even a, a, a more different note because it's like, I know that, man. I know what that's yeah. like and that, yep. just that, that wanting to be there. And, you know, how – and it sounds so corny, but it does kind of bring people together on a bike night or whatever because, hey, what kind of bike you got? And when you're in a helmet, yeah. it's a little yeah. different than walking down the street or you see somebody on TV, go, oh, that guy's a jerk because blah, blah. But when you both – when you ride and that central passion is there, it's mm-hmm. different. So when I see you and the relationship you have with your son, man, that hits me so deep. And I root for you like – like you don't even know, bro. I root for you like you're my own son, but I'm not paying child support. That's how I root for you, man. I'm gonna send you. A ch- I'm send, I'm gonna send you an invoice, BT. I'm sending you an invoice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what? I know he's getting antsy, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take it, take it back to Junior. So, Junior, yeah, yeah. what was it like for you? Like, when I know you can't remember back when you were four, even though your daddy can. So maybe that tells us how, something how we grew up. Maybe we grew up in a pure generation. He can remember being on a bo- motorcycle at four, but you can't remember meeting Mark Marquez at four. But anyway, so <laughs> as far back as you can remember, what about you, what, what rang true with motorcycles with you? Or, or was it always just there? I mean, well, as my dad always forgets to say stuff. Um, one day- Watch it, watch it now, boy. Was, uh, <laughs> thanks, BT, appreciate that. Uh, one day we went to a racetrack and my dad like borrowed a bike from one of his friends. Mm-hmm. It was an NSR 50, I think. Yes. And then, like, I just, like, I feel, I feel like it was around there when I fell in love with motorcycles. Really? It's like I was riding bicycles for a long time, and then I saw motorcycles again, and then I was like. That's it. Mo- Actually, so to plug in there, just so to fill in, because, uh, so when we got back, he learned to ride a bicycle at four. He started racing BMX, and because I just thought I can't afford to race motorcycles, so maybe he'll just ride bicycles and then get about the motorcycles. So what he said is that the next time he saw me ride, he's like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> so that that's probably what ended up happening. I tried to sidetrack him, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, so when you first got on a motorcycle, now did you get like a, I don't know, where you, uh, you know, I, you guys grew up in Chatsworth or was it LA proper or where? Yeah, yeah, Chatsworth. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it, it was it a, uh, it's like kind of like a motocross bike, right, or trail bike, right? Yeah. It was a, uh, it was a CRF fifty. Okay, like, now did you put, did you have training wheels on it or did you go straight, uh, just trying to balance? No, it? straight, straight off. And no, how old were you? Five, yeah. six. Well, the first day I, I did some motocross with, I think, a, a Pee Wee or uh, a PW CRF 50. Yeah, yeah. yeah Pee Wee 50. And I was doing uh, dirt and I fell into a few like ruts. And... He, he, he tried to, so this is day one. He had training wheels on. Okay. He, the boy that lived there, I think there are six. The boy that lived there was hitting hitting tabletops and stuff. And this this is his first day with training wheels. And he tried to hit, I told him not to do it. And he tried to hit the double anyway. <laughs> And went off the side, you know. That's great. Went through the air, you know. That's. A... <laughs> he ended that's... up in ditches. He was everywhere. <laughs> but that's how you do it, man. I mean, I, yeah. I tell you, you gotta fall, and you gotta get up and brush yourself off and get back on it. And if you don't, and you go, I don't think it's for me. Well, that's fine. But that's what you gotta do. And I tell people all the time, the best for a kid. Get him a dirt bike. Let him go off in a field and, and whatever. Let him fall. Let him get back up. Let him dust himself off. And if you, it, now did you cry when you first fell? Did you cry? Yeah, because I fell into a ditch. Well, that don't mean nothing. I, you ain't got to yell at me like that. Like I said, you better watch your tone, boy. Watch your no, tone. No, no. First, I fell into the ditch, and then the bike fell on me. Well, I mean, look, I know you're 11, but you, you got to watch your tone when you talk to me now, okay? <laughs> I, I just asked you. I said, did you cry? And you... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take this hat off and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a Rocco yeah. Landers hat on now. You okay? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know no, shout out to Rocco. We love, we love no, that I kid. love Rocco, right. man. No, I love Rocco. Just shout yeah, out to him, yeah, man. Yeah. I wish him the best. I wish you know. I wish all Americans the best over there, man. I really yeah, do. Yeah. Okay, so now when did it get serious? When did you go? Hey, Dad, I think I want to race. When did when did that? When did you go from riding for fun to go? You know what? I think I want to try this racing. Well, I actually never did ride for like fun. I. I got the CR50 and I like I was already competitive. Because really? my dad would ride with me like a lot. He would he would pass me and then he would slow down and then like sometimes I would I would get really close and then I would crash and I would get really mad. Yeah. But then I was like really <laughs> No, he's the the thing when I realized he had a problem is that um he's like really, really, really competitive. Good. Um, and when 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 he was four, he had just learned to ride a bike in April. And then we went to the first BMX race in July, so he's still, still super fresh. Uh, and I don't, have you ever seen BMX racing where they, you know, yes. it's like close track one yes. lap before yes. it? So it was him against I think three or four other kids, and he put like the nastiest pass on this kid in the first corner. Yes. And he just learned how to ride. It's his first race, you know. And it's like, what the hell is that, you know? And and just that couple of years of BMX racing, which is super competitive, he had cried so many times. He just doesn't. He does not like. He sets an expectation where he needs to be, and like that's where he wanted to be from day one. And, and I think so. When we went to motorcycles, it's just because he's, he just never. It was never like a hobby for him. For him, he was always like competing. But okay, like, now granted, I mean, I think that's great. Don't get me wrong, but are you having fun while you do it? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's competitive, and you want to win. But are you having fun while you do it? I mean, it's one thing to be competitive on a win, but at the end of the day, do you stop back and go, "Did you have fun? Yeah." And then, man, I didn't win, but did you have fun? I mean, are you having fun? Uh, <laughs> I mean, is, is it fun for you? Because, I mean, I know you want to win. But okay, so if, if you don't win, you're not having fun. But if you win, of course it's fun when you win. Everybody likes that. So, yeah. But when you're on a motorcycle, is that, is that the place you want to be? When you're on a motorcycle, on the grid, is, you, do you, is that where you really want to be? Is that where you go, okay, this is, this, is what, this is what gets my juices pumping. This is what I've always wanted to do. I mean, now, like now when I'm at 11, um, when I don't win, it's not like I get super frustrated now because I don't set an expectation. And the kids here are really fast and they're really competitive. So it's not, it's, if I get on a new bike, for example, like the Moto 5, the, the one that I'm racing right now, mm -hmm. I don't have my expectation for getting first or just first, you know, because there's like kids that have been training with the bike for a long time or they've already had like two other years of experience. So I'm like, um, maybe like top 10 maybe. And then okay. next better and then better and then better. Because, but before I would just go for like number one. 
Now, I, I saw that you raised I, everything. I saw that you raised everything. I mean, you went from, I mean, you raised flat track. Now, were you too young to realize James Stewart, or is he ever an inspiration for you? And what made you not want to go yeah, supercross or motocross and go uh, road racing instead? I mean, was he ever an inspiration, like, or him or Malcolm? I mean, I know, I know you're young, and I'm not going to talk down to you, but does he even remember James Stewart? Yeah. Yeah, I think he, he knows who he is. And, and I'll be honest, the reason why he probably would have ridden motocross, I, I was too afraid because motocross, like yeah. we went into uh, to racing and everything, flat track was new, road racing was new, like, you know, being that serious. And, uh, you know, of course, coming from, from Southern California, motocross was like, there's a ton of motocross tracks. Yes. Uh, and some, some guys that competed really high level motocross. And I was just, it that made me nervous. You know, he was so good at the other stuff. Right. That like we haven't even up until today trained so much on 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 motocross. So I'm I'm sure he could have been competitive. I don't I know he knows who James Stewart was, but Even Baba Stewart. Yes. But, yeah, no, but to, to be honest with you, like he doesn't he likes watching MotoGP, but he goes through waves. He he doesn't like spectating. So and a lot of racers are like that. He doesn't like watching yes racing much. You know, that so it's funny because like even as much as he loves Moto G he probably watches 30% of the time that I do because he for him he doesn't like going to we go to I said I'm gonna go to Mamelo to go watch a race and he's like I'm good you know because he doesn't want to he doesn't want to sit in the stands and watch he wants you know? to do he don't want to sit he wants to do yeah. which I know so. I think that is like I said man the fact at 11 and you might you may take this for uh for granted especially being a dad but like okay you know he wants to ride instead of watching he wants to do but man and especially in today's society the way kids are i mean that is incredible and the fact he he motivates himself he's a self-motivated kid i mean that is i mean i think that is great the fact you do that i, I know you're taking it for granted but i mean when I was that age, I wish I would have had that kind of vision. I mean, my brain was all over the place, maybe because I'm a Gemini, but my brain was all over <laughs> the place. You know what I mean? And I mean, I loved watching, but also loved doing. So, and I, and the way I think, I mean, I still can, I'm still, I still want to be the black Steve McQueen. I still want to, I want to do movies and act, yeah. but when I'm not, I want to be over in Europe and I want to be racing. I want to race go-karts because uh, Travis Pastrana said with age comes a cage. So I still want to, I wanna, <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to race go-karts. Yeah. I still want to race motors. I, I mean, maybe enduro probably. hope I don't hit a tree, but I want to race, <laughs> I want to race enduro hey, or something. I did hit a tree with, a tree uh, with the 125 one. Like, How? Oh, I mean, you're young. Your vision should be there. What happened? Trees don't just hop out in front of you. They do. They actually do. No, they, they do. Don't. Auto happy. He got throttle happy. The bike got sideways and sent him off into the into the forest. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for telling me the real deal. Okay, you know, just, just go to bed. How about that? Just go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> Eat a tap and go to bed. Okay. Yeah. No, so, so two things. I was. Curious to, uh, I wanted to know. So, like, um, back, back to your question, BT. Do you do you have fun? It's a, it's an interesting because a lot of people see kids training from a super young age, and yeah. I'm all, I'm concerned about that myself. Um, which which aspects of it do you enjoy, or what's your you know what Tell us about the your how you feel about it all because that, that's something we he, we all yeah, talk about. Because every sport, I mean, honestly, with kids grow up, I mean, when you see guys in the major, and this isn't just motorcycle racing, it's, it's, it's everything's so specialized now. You know, with basket, especially basketball or soccer. Yeah. And, and, you know, you see it with, with supercross, motocross. Those kids have to, at, at eight or nine, and go, hey, listen, is this what you really want to do? Because if not, we got to mortgage the house, and you got to be the breadwinner or whatever. And then you see people like Ryan Villapoto, who was just miserable. When he won that championship, and he was just miserable. And even, I remember even Jeremy Grath was like, man, what the hell is wrong with this guy? He won the champion. He was like, yeah, okay. And, and that was it. And everybody was like, what is wrong with this guy? But he wasn't enjoying it. He won a championship, but he wasn't because he had to – every day was bikes, 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 train, 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 train. Win a championship. He's like, okay, I'm glad this shit's over. And then, you know, I got, I got maybe a week break, and I got to go to motocross. So, yeah, I mean, are you having fun? I mean, that's what the deal is, man, is having fun. Mm. <laughs> now, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun because – there's more things than just winning, you know, like making friends and just riding a bike in general. But before, I don't think when I when I didn't win, I didn't have that much fun. But, but, okay, but was it now? Was it like a job, or was it? It was just something that you did. Like, okay, I got to get on a bike today, and I got to ride. I got to practice. Boom. Next day, I got to ride. I got to practice. Okay, I got a race coming up on the weekend. Okay, I got to do this. Damn it, I didn't get the top five. And I, and you think like that because sometimes when you're in it, you don't see it. That's why everybody has coaches. That's why a coach can look at you from afar and go, hey, 
you're not doing this like you used to, or it doesn't look like you're having fun, or from the outside looking in. I mean, that's why sometimes, that's why everybody in life, even Michael Jordan, they have coaches, because coaches see what you can't see. So and that's why I ask that, because sometimes you get in that rhythm of that kind of rope where it's like, okay, race, this is race week. I train blah, 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 uh, for these three, you know, these days I go to the gym on this day. And this day I got to go and check in a hotel. And then we got qualifying and blah, blah, blah. And boom, okay, race week over, boom. And you go through it, but you never stop and, you know, look at it from afar and go, man, I had so much fun that weekend. Or when you get older, like your dad's age, you know, I don't know, he's what, 60, 70? When you get that older and you step back and you, <laughs> and, you, and you look back and you go, wow, man, I had fun. Like, and that's, and that's the reason I asked that because, like I said, you're in it right now. I mean, for me and your dad, you're living the dream. And you're where I always wish I was. That's why I love watching you and, 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 and watching your progress. When I met you, and I think it was Valencia, when we met in Valencia finally, Man, I was yeah. so hyped to see you, man. You have no idea. And I was so, like, because I was like, this kid is where I've always wanted to be. And that's why you, it, this family is so tight in my heart. I love following you guys. So that's why I always ask, are you having fun, though? And, that, and that's the reason I ask that. So never forget to look from afar. Never forget to stop. I don't know when you can and go, did I have fun? Okay, I did. And, and, that's, and that's the reason I ask that. I know it sounds corny now because you're 11 and then it's like an old man going, boy, make sure you have fun. But that's what I ask Because, <laughs> you know, one no, day, you never it's know funny you, It's funny you say that because, like, from my perspective, I had to change uh, as, as the coach, you know, I had to change our approach a lot because I'd say early on it was like a job because I was wrapped up in crazy competitive dad mode and trying to keep him at the front all the time. And in my mind, it was, you know, the more laps he's doing and the more time on the bike. And, you know, if you want to be the same conversation, you know, are you sure you want to same stuff? And then um, I just crossed paths with uh, a few, like, um, I know Joe Roberts' dad, Matt, really well. Um, you know, I've met like Chavi Ortiz. I know his dad really well. So oh, I, I, that kid, I, love him. That was fantastic. He's like one of the, he is just one of the most mild mannered, super cool, ridiculously competitive, but he's it's really he's an incredible writer and person yes. but meeting the dads you know I ask obviously writing advice but then I ask from a dad's perspective like how do you guys manage these years you guys have multiple kids and and all of them said man before age 13 just relax and enjoy your time at the track you don't need to write every day all the time doesn't I mean before we hopped on this call he's playing Fortnite for three hours or good two, three hours. that's he's, good that's what you want to do. And he, so like this, with my motorcycle friends yeah with his motorcycle that is true. They go and compete on Fortnite, and then they. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's no, but beautiful. I had to learn to balance it out because I don't want him to to go, like you said, arrive at, at the goal one day and look back and like, man, I, I didn't enjoy the rest of my life though. So, so we really try to to balance things out. I try to give him his time to. He watches a lot of anime. He you know plays games. He just does the Cute stuff he stuff. wants. It's when it's writing time, then we go ride, and then we when it's not writing time, he just does his own thing, you know? See, that, that, I, but that, I love that because there's, there's a time and a play. And I think that keeps away from the burnout, which is what I was going to ask you. Keep away from the burnout because you got to have that time. Like I said, go play Fortnite, man. Go do whatever with it, the, you kids do. I don't know. Get on TikTok. I don't know what y'all do. I should I shouldn't even know what y'all <laughs> yeah. do. I don't, have any, I don't have any kids. It's so weird. I don't know. I don't know. You know what? Keep that to yourself. I don't know what it is. I really, I, I really teenager think. version of Instagram. Not even. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know what it is, but good for you. If that's what you do, good. I mean, that's the way it should be. And it should be, to me personally, it should be kind of like the way Marquez or Xavier, like you said, you should have fun and then having fun, having fun. And once that helmet goes on and once that visor goes click, you're like a whole new person. I mean, that's the way I look at Marquez. And, you know, and it's a whole, when he puts that, and Brad Bender, once they put that helmet on and it goes down, it's like, where did this guy come from? And they'll, they'll run yeah. into the wall. They'll do whatever it takes. Yeah. And so, yeah. and that's another question I want to ask you because I know you mentioned, I know he's crashed a couple of times, but he was also had good sportsmanship where he told a guy, hey, it was my fault. And I saw him one time, he helped his, uh, his teammate out that he crashed and he helped him push his bike. And so I was going to ask you, at what moment, though, do you realize, okay, is it kind of like a Marquez win at all costs? Or is it like a okay? I want to win, but if 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 it, that involves me putting I man, this guy might go into the sand trap for me to win. What, are you prepared to do that? Because I think Emilio Alzamora has created a monster in Mark Marquez, and I don't know if that was there before, but I just know the way he is now. And I and I'm one of those people. I follow people from 
uh, the CEVs and Moto3. And, and my, my philosophy is if you follow somebody when they're that small and they know you were with them from the get, then I'll always be kind of, they'll, they'll always remember me. You know what I mean? It's kind of like you now. Okay, say you do go to MotoGP and, you know, and you win. Everybody's like, oh, Christian Daniel Jr., he's my man. But if you see me somewhere, you go, oh, that's BT. That dude was with me when I was in Moto5, in the mini GP. No one knew who I was. That's my dude right there. And you'll invite me into the trailer. We'll have a good time. We'll be talking to Beyonce. You know, stuff like that. So, and that's, and that's, my, no. and that's, and that's my philosophy. So, yeah. so, but when, it, but if it came down to that, what should you be more proud of him going to win at all costs or wanting to win but at the same time like ah this guy might go into a sand trap or something might happen to him i better mm. Mm, i mean it's kind of both so basically if uh if he goes into the sand trap then you can't stop no but like, you're, you're you're let's say you have the moment you're at the moment where you can make the pass and you making that pass or taking the victory might put a guy in the sand trap that might hurt him but then you're gonna win oh I mean, if it hurts him like really bad, then no. But if it's like a really slow, very very slow corner, then it's just it's a it. it's an interesting question, man. I, I'll say because like one of the things we learn here, and I think one of the things that separates riding here, even from age five and six, and at least back in uh, LA where we used to ride, is touching is super common here. You know, like there's a there's a, a big difference between contact which they contact is super regular he, he just got through training on sunday with uh chavi artiguez and a couple of other guys super fast guys they were touching each other left tires were rubbing people were getting bumped into the dirt like, yeah nobody was mad at each other and they didn't do it in a way to where they're trying to hurt each other there are some riders where you can tell that their dads tell them you know win at all costs that's not we don't that's not our philosophy you know like it's for me it's better to have better race crack and if you can't pass somebody if it's the last lap and you've got to make a lunge, don't do it if you're going to hurt somebody. You don't T-bone somebody. Right. But if you've got, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a Rossi to Sete Juvenile last corner in Jerez, you got to bump him into the dirt. You know, it's horrendous. It's the last lap. It's the last one. you got to do what you got to do. So that is it. <laughs> with, 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 with some courtesy, you know, with a little bit of courtesy. Don't the max the dirt. I, so. I, I, think, I think a Rossi Juvenile is okay, but oh, a Marquez Lorenzo in Lorenzo's own corner. Remember that? Uh, Remember yeah, he teamed yeah, yeah. him in his own Lorenzo, corner. Lorenzo's pissed off doing his yeah. Ah, well, oh. Lorenzo did it to everybody. He hit him. He go. He always shake his head like. Yeah. What's your opinion, dude? What do you think? So when you're when you're when you're behind the guy, you're getting ready. Actually, he had that moment uh, at the first race. Um, this this last race that we just did. So what goes through your head at that moment? Um. Uh, well, if if I'm going through my head, uh, like in the race. If I'm faster than the guy and he's basically holding me up, then and there's like nowhere else, nowhere else to pass except for the paces that he, he doesn't think that he you can pass him, then that's where you gotta pass him. Even right. if you gotta touch. Even if you gotta touch a little bit, I was like, no, I mean, no, I get you. And, and you bump me, you bump me. I, I'm already in front of you. Why are you like bumping me? No, but yeah. no, that's why I asked though. I mean, I want to see where, where your mentality is. And I mean, I personally have no problem with it, but I just want to see where you were with that. And 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 I want to ask you. Okay, so when you first came over from the United States uh, to Spain to race and to live, by the way, to make which is a big decision, yeah. right? Here, to live when you first got on your first track in in Spain. And like, what was what was the first difference? You went, whoa, this is not America. Like, whoa, I'm I'm in the big times now. Well, what was that moment? And when was that moment? I mean, the the moment was when uh, I was riding in in America. I would always battle with Travis and Owen and a, a whole bunch of like these guys, which are my motorcycle friends, also from America. Right. Um, we we would battle a lot, but then we're always in the front. So then I thought that, oh, well, since I'm in the front in America, then I can be in the front in Spain. Easy, but yeah, easy peasy. And that wasn't the case. And okay, yeah, so what was the difference you noticed though? What was the difference you there, made? Um, the big difference was in the Spanish championship, mm -hmm. which I finished like 24th. There's two groups. Okay. Now two, the B group. Wow. My wow. first place. I I'm for sure I'm gonna be up there. All oh, these guys aren't that fast, and when I get to the track, it's like. Yeah. But but what but what was it though? I mean, what what was the eye-opening moment? You went, 
wow, what did I just get myself into? I mean, because, like I said, you come over, you're fast in America, you think, I'll just come over, I got my California attitude, I got my flip-flops on, I'm about to put this hat on backwards, I'm about to show them what's up, show them that Compton slap, whatever, you know how we do in the chats, what, what, up? And then you go, uh-oh, man, dad, Yeah, what was, uh, it? was there a moment when somebody passed you, or if you... Yeah, like, when, when, the, when the people passed me, it was just, from my perspective back then, it was pretty close. Oh, so, uh, it, so it was a, the proximity of the racing, like how close they were to you, and they didn't give a damn? Yeah, they, they were like, they would pass, or they would, at least the fastest guys, they would pass you, or or they would, like, make you go to the edge. You would have to let off. Okay, so when did it take you, how long did it take you before you, you got, okay, you got up to speed, like, okay, this is how it's going to be? Okay. And without getting mad also, because sometimes you don't realize that's just how somebody is. I mean, it's how when I used to train that way in, in wrestling or in martial arts. Like, I will, you know, my dad always taught me you train the way, train harder than, you, uh, the, the, how, than the wrestling match or whatever the fight's going to be. And that way it's going to be easy when you get into it. And that's just the truth. You got to go hard. And that way the game or the race, whatever, is going to be easier. So what was that moment of you where you go, okay, I got to get up to speed. Now I'm up to speed. Like, when, when did that happen? When was that aha breakthrough uh, moment? It was in the second season of the Spanish championship, mm -hmm. like the last race or the second to last race where um, it was rainy. So, and it was my first time like actually racing in the rain. Okay. So um, when I went there, it's just, I, I didn't have that much experience like when it was pouring. So I had to man up and like not go slow, you know? There you go. I, I didn't and uh, I did pretty good, you know, like it's just a little bit more confidence you need with the bike and, and, and a little bit of trust in yourself. And I'm glad you said that because what I thought one of the greatest moments that when I was looking at all your videos and everything and trying to get this down, you know, when I saw after you crashed, you had you talked about meditating and how you didn't, you know, how you crashed on the bike and how you meditated. Talk, run me through that, man, because I thought that was a really telling Experience to be like I said, man. To so at, at your age, is so young to know about the meditation and to get into that and know what your body and everything needs. Like we didn't have that growing up, and that's why I look at you and I go, "That is so amazing." So talk to anybody didn't see it. It's a great video. It's after you crash and you're just you have a moment within yourself and your dad's recording it, and I'm just like, and it, to me it was that was a wow. But it may have been my favorite video of all yours. I mean, I love the racing. But that was just because that, that's the mental aspect. And for you to go, I really wasn't comfortable with the bike. I had to go like, I didn't do this. I mean, talk me through that. Uh, do you remember that was, a, I think you had the, uh, the, that's when he had the high side, right? I think we were in Spain, he had the high side and he was talking about his first day. Yeah. I think it was when he had the of Vic. When we had just came, you went to high side off of Vic and then we went back to Vic and you had to ride and you were, you were like super nervous because it was a big crash. Yeah. Oh. I mean, the meditation, I learned that in America. My dad said, like, when when you're really, like, too much, yeah. too much pumped up, then you have to, like, chillax. And meditation is a very good way to chillax. Like, 10 deep breaths while you close your eyes, and you're, like, not thinking about anything. And then you just, when you come off, it's it's better. You feel better. That's beautiful. And, and did you, like, it, it's so, it sounds easy, but it's so hard to clear your mind. And that's the hardest thing. It's and it's, for like 10 minutes. It, it's got to be hard for you because you're, you're racing. I mean, so it's like, okay, okay, I got to. And then did you clear it? And then were you better after that? Yeah, I, I, because I, before I was very scared when I crashed after that. So I didn't drive my knee for like a long time. But then I think two or three, two or three like training weeks after I started dragging my knee again. Good for you, man. I think that's beautiful. I, I think I think one, I, I wanted to plug one of the things I, I tell them all the time. It's it's something that, that stuck with us. And I want you to describe it because I'm just curious of your perspective. I always give them an analogy of a water bottle when, when we're at the track today. So can you what's your interpretation of when I when I talk to you about the water bottle and your focus and your thoughts and stuff like that? Um I feel like the water bottle is basically your brain. Um that like so there's a little bit of water inside your mind. The, the water is the um, is the distraction that you have. Okay. So the more water you have, then probably the, the more like stiff and and like just your mind will be clouded. But when 
when when you ride fast and you're having fun, then the bottle's all the way empty. Like you have nothing in your mind. And that's when you ride really fast. So it's kind of like a Bruce Lee philosophy when he says flow like water. Just be like water and flow. Am I right? Correct? Yeah. Well, it's more, it's more like the what ends up happening. I always tell him like if you have if your mind is a water bottle, it's got to be empty in order for you to because you you ride, you need all of your attention to yes. ride well. Yes. So what ends up happening sometimes is, is his mind will be bouncing off of like doubt or fear or another guy's doing this or, you know, just other things are in his mind and he doesn't have enough space mentally to, to be attentive to the bike and stuff like that. So one of the things I tell him and it's roots, it stems from meditation, but it's about like just emptying and being a clean slate, completely empty bottle. So your mind can use the maximum capacity to pay attention to what he's doing when he's on the bike. Um, but he did talk about stiffness and that's what, what do you, I, the flow like water, can you talk about that, like the stiffness and how it impacts your riding when you're uh, flexible? I think um, when when I first start riding, I'm really, really stiff. Because, uh -huh. you know, I think I think too much, like, oh, it's the morning time, it's cold, I have to take it easy, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm like, I'm really, really stiff when I'm on a bike. Um, and then, like, th that's the part of... of the, the little bit of water that's inside the bottle, you know, okay. you have to, you have to flush it out. Okay. Cause you're like, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And like you, for the whole day, the whole day will just be gone basically. But you're 11. You shouldn't be stiff. I mean, you should be all flimsy, loosey goosey. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, me and your dad, yeah, we're stiff. It takes us like four hours just to even like get waking up. I mean, but you. Doing this all day long. I do this all day long. <laughs> 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 just a constant okay. regular routine for no reason at all. Nothing so I just do it. Just be <laughs> now, what I want to ask about you is what did you do? This is to dad now. I don't know what for for a living, and you can tell me, you know, hey, you're getting too deep here. But like, what did you do for a living? How'd you decide, like, okay, I'm gonna do away with this job here, and and we're gonna move to a whole other continent for my son? Like, what did you do for a living? What do you, what do, you do for a living exactly? I never knew that. Yeah. I just knew you. No. Just con I mean, you seriously, you're the greatest dad in the world, is what I look at you as. That's it. That's my job. I just, I just, I show up. I collect the check for being a dad. <laughs> my pension uh no no so um i've been in in uh, it sales for a long time for probably 10 15 years or something like that um it the transition here was really hard um because i went from i worked for at&t before i joined before i came here oh, I, oh you got some money okay yeah 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 no i mean i you know i we were earning good money and it was paying for racing and stuff like that and we the decision to move here was somewhat last minute um so when I first arrived, actually, I arrived first in January of 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I was here for a couple of months. And then Christian came over in February. And then my wife and my younger son came over in April. Um, so when I first arrived, because it takes a long time for Americans to get a, a residency here, the only thing I could do is teach English under the table, which was making, I mean, it was making peanuts. We had savings, obviously, but like, the, the money, I, the, it was a drastic change between what I earned in December of 2017 and what I earned in January of 2018 was, was worlds apart. So the first nine months was a struggle. I was teaching English. I, I mean, I enjoyed it, but I was not making enough money. Luckily, like I said, we had savings and sponsors and stuff like that. Um, and then I think September, September that year, I got a job at HP. Um, and, and now I'm with a, with VMware, with the, you know, uh, one of the best software companies in the world, but selling, selling software, selling SD-WAN. So, but I've been in technology sales for a long time. Luckily, my experience I had back in the States transferred over here and I was able to, to find a good job here. Um, but it was the first nine months was, it was Crazy. difficult, man. It was really, really difficult. I, he, he was a trooper, man, because the first two months we arrived, you know, I, I had to drive. To school and he was doing uh, homeschooling at that time from an American school so he'd have to sit in like another classroom while I was teaching English doing his homework uh, you know it, it was just it was crazy and, and that's in Barcelona right yeah yeah, okay, yeah, now, yeah how'd you guys decide to move to Barcelona instead of say Valencia or, or yeah, anywhere so, else so so I did a bit of research um, before I came and there's a you know there's a lot of history in, in Barcelona in terms of, of Spanish champions and, and successful writers right and then a uh, uh, plug to my, my buddy Ansgar Nadal. He lives really close nearby. 
uh, he helped us. We, we did a test or like a wild card race uh, late 2017. He helped us organize all that stuff. Uh, he knows uh, Joe Roberts really well, Benny Solis, um, Jason Uribe. A lot of the Americans that have raced here, he knows them really well. So he was helping us get things coordinated. And so he helped us get bank accounts set up and stuff like that. So we just decided to, to set up in Barcelona near him. That way he could help us out, you know, with integrated into the life and training and stuff like that. And we're literally like 15 minutes away from his house. Yeah, yeah we live really close to him. See, so. that's great. Have a support network. Like, but how was it uh, getting acclimated to the language, Barry? I mean, like, do you still take Spanish courses or Spanish classes? How does that speak um, Spanish? So growing up in L.A., I mean, I, I spoke enough Spanish to, to get around. Uh, my, my Spanish level hasn't. People here say it's changed, but I still feel like I sound like a three-year-old. I haven't taken classes or nothing like that because it's enough to, like, get around. This guy, on the other hand, is, like, proper fluent in Spanish. So he's yes. Spanish and Catalan. It's like people don't even know. They're like, where are you from? Because you sound like you're Catalan, you know, and, and or you sound like you're Spanish. So he, Beautiful. Uh, so he's because using I my translator. School. Yeah. Well, let's, let's speak a little Spanish. I'm going to ask you a question in English, but I want you to answer it in Spanish, okay? I mean, okay. okay. So, like, uh, when's the last time you flat tracked? And speak in Spanish. Uh, well, it's all just Spanish. embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's English. Embarrassing. I, I said all Spanish. You're not listening. See, that's why you're going to get a whooping when this is. <laughs> 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 so speak in Spanish. I'm going to ask you again. When's the last time you flat tracked? Come on, you can do it. <laughs> it's funny. I could have just, if like literally 10 minutes before this was on, him and his buddy were on Fortnite yelling at each other in Spanish. Well, so see, it's. That, that, but that's what I do. I put kids, I, I put kids on. See, if he ever had to testify against somebody, say your dad was caught embezzling, okay, in Spanish, and you had to go testify against him in court. You know, you can't be doing that because dad's going to the clink in Spanish. So you got to answer a question like, boom, right there yeah. and there, okay? So I just, for I just a want you, I just want you. <laughs> No, I'm trying to bribe him. I'm trying to bribe him with a popsicle BT. <laughs> well, I think that's beautiful, man. But that's the way it should be. I mean, like I said, I think this race is great and what he's going after, but you still got to be a kid. And here's the part that I want to ask is, okay, so, you know, you're going for the dream or whatever, but is there a point, though, as a dad, are you worried that maybe – you know, he may get to a point and goes, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore, whatever. Like, has that ever entered your mind? You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what if yeah, you Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and he can probably attest to this. Um, before we even made the move, uh, I told my wife, you know, we need to be move here. Uh, and we moved here with, like, let's say, a five-year plan to see what happened, to see how he adapted, to see how we adapted as a family. But I, the last thing I wanted was for him to ride around w with the pressure that we changed our life for him and for him to carry that on his shoulders. So... I always tell people, and they probably don't believe me, but if he told me tomorrow, I tell him the same thing. If he tells me tomorrow that he doesn't want to ride anymore, then it's fine because he's not, it's, it's, he's not doing it for me. And really, I, I'd have more money and more time. I'll be sitting out in Malaga in 105 degree weather, you know, trying to record videos and repair bikes and stuff. I love doing it, yeah. but like I love doing it because I like seeing him succeed. If he right. doesn't want to do that, then we'll go do something else, you know? So I, me for me... Yeah, it could drawing. be music, drawing. He likes a lot of things. So, you know, it's, it's, I always, I, I get a little bit crazy sometimes and I do get competitive, crazy race dad, but I try to stay excited and not, I don't want him to do this for any other reason than he wants to do it. And as for as long as he's motivated, you know, if A, he doesn't want to do it one day or B, he just doesn't get the lucky break or the cards don't fall on the table and he doesn't go to MotoGP or something like that. I, I always want to look back and say, we enjoyed all these years. We still yeah. love Spain for a lot of different reasons. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think about it so much anymore because, you know, we, we kind of all as a family made a decision to, to move here and enjoy life for everything, even outside of the motorcycling stuff, which we try to enjoy it all. Are you enjoying Spain? Are you enjoying Barcelona? Yeah. Yeah. CCC. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's easy. I can do CCC. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. I can get somebody yeah, yeah. right now. I can do this, this homeless guy over here. I can get him to say CCC. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't nothing. I ain't impressed. Okay. <laughs> A ver si me entiendes ahora, eh. Oh, okay, now, see, now, now, now you're being a smart ass. Ahora qué, okay. ahora qué. Now you're being a smart ass. Ahora, ahora vas hablando, ahora vas hablando, eh. He's talking a lot of snacks. No lo sé, no lo sé, no lo sé. Here's an important question of all the more important questions I probably ask is, um, Real Madrid or Barcelona? Who's your team? Um, 
Ninguna. No, there's got to be one. None of them. Why? I like the um, the Jaguar. What you call it? Who? Seville. Like Jeep. Oh. We don't watch too much football here, but okay, I'm going with with Barcelona because of Messi, because Messi's the man. Yes, he is. But I, I oh. still like Pretty Boy, though. I still like Pretty Boy. Yeah, man, you gotta tip his hat, tip your hat off to him. But he's not on Madrid no more. He's Dude, racing for. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Uh, one of the times I, I I flew into Madrid and I did like any tourist, man. I got all my Madrid stuff. I got a scarf. I got I, you know I did all that <laughs> stuff. Like you know, are you really serious, BT? And I was all and I took a picture of it. And Bradley Smith hits me up on a on an insta on a on a direct message. He goes, "Hey, don't wear that here." <laughs> he goes, no, dude. Yeah, like I was he can't go to school. I remember when he first started going to school, talking about you know Cristiano Ronaldo. I was like, "Shh, yeah. don't." Yeah, <laughs> you will never be seen from again. They're like, "What happened to the American?" He said, <laughs> he said that now he is no more. You know. He, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so how do you keep them away from, and I think the biggest, and it sounds like it just being a joke, but it's the truth, though. Coming up, trying to stay focused on motorcycles, don't get me wrong, you got your friend, you know, you play Fortnite, whatever. But how do you keep them away from girls? Because he's getting it at, at girl age, where it's like, I mean, seriously. Oh, wow. And you're, no, see, that's he's what I'm he's saying. Not there yet. He's I mean, not there yeah, yet. well, that's good. Because, I mean, you're in Barcelona, the most beautiful women in the world. I've been there before. I almost got married, and I don't even want to get married. But I was in Barcelona for like three days, and I was like, God, please, if she just says, if she looks my way and she goes, you want to be married, I'll go, see, see, see. So how do you, how do you keep him from no, no. So I don't know. And again, you, you can stop me if, if you don't agree, but I think that like, I, I tell him that. I, I tell him to, to be ready that there's going to be a lot of influences in life. You're going to see friends doing a lot of stuff and try to enjoy life in a balanced way. Yes. Um, but, you know, I, I tell him it, it's, it's his decision. You know, he's right. the one when he finishes the, the, when he crosses the finish line at a race and whatever result he gets usually dictates the kind of work he put in before that. And that's his responsibility. It's not mine. I can help him plan training properly and stuff like that. But I, when it comes to girls and stuff like that, I tell him at that moment, he's got to decide. And, you know, he's, he's the one that has to decide, yes, you want to go, you know, and there's tons of, there's a park across from our house tons of kids hanging out and girls and everything like that. I see him looking at, at girls all the time. And my perspective, it's out of my hands. That, that's his decision, you yeah. know? That's, so. that's, that's great. I mean, like, you know, when it comes to being a parent, man, I mean, there's that part of your, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a parent, I'm just saying from afar, but it's that part you go, okay, I can, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make a drink. So it's like, listen, son, okay. you're putting that time in. And, and I wish somebody would have told me this, listen, if you're really successful, they'll come to you. If you're really successful, yeah. and if you can stay focused instead of going, because no offense, and I don't know he sees it now, and we we have been there, but and man, high school, college, all that's overrated. I and mean, if you're mm -hmm. focused on what you want to do, you'll get through so much more life. Do if, if being a motorcycle racer is what you want to do, and you want to be successful, and you put that work in, you'll be a lot more uh, successful than the people who went to high. Let me tell you, proms and all that, and going to college—that's overrated. I mean, like they say, education is important. Motorcycle racing is more important than and I, and I mean, from the bottom of my heart, man, if you focus, you'll get so much more further and you'll see life and that'll be your, cl your classroom is what you're in right now. I mean, I'm not interviewing some e e everyday 11 year old as well. I shouldn't, but I'm not interviewing some regular 11 year old. It's because you, who you are, man, you got goals at 11 years old to be so focused. I think that is beautiful. And you don't even notice yet. And I mean, from, but you don't notice yet, but at 11, somebody's looking up to you right now going, I want to be Christian Daniel Jr. I mean that. Somebody right now who's four or five who probably won't even remember this like you didn't at four, but they'll look at you and go, I want to be where he is. He's my inspiration. So as, as much as you're looking up to whoever rider you look up to, there's kids right now who are looking up to you like, you know, I'm stuck in this, you know, this piss ass state. I wish I was in you know, Barcelona like this guy is, you know. That's the reason I got this hat on right now because I support you like that because I, I see that you're not about, you don't, you don't talk about it, you're about it. You know what I mean? And that's what I love what you're doing. Like I said, 11 years old, to be focused like this, that's beautiful. And like, I, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, from the very beginning, like I said, when I said, are you having fun? That's what I'm more interested in. I want you to win championships, man. I want those goals for you to be accomplished, and I want you to be successful. But more than anything in life, I want you to have 
fun. I want to be, when it's all said and done with, and you might be pissed off at one race. You might have been like, why did I make that pass? Why did that guy beat me? He sucks. I got the better bike. But at the end of the day, after you get through going through your little piss-ass fit, like my mom used to always say, I want you to get <laughs> your trailer. And they go, did you have fun? They go, eh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I had fun, you know? I could be BT or I could have fun. So I, I, I want you to do that. You know what I mean? I want you to live your life and say I had fun. And that's the most important part. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and I want some one-word answers, okay? What's your five-year yes. goal? In five years, you'll be 16. What's your five-year goal? Where do you uh, want to be in five years from now? You'll be 16. Motor what do you want to be? Yeah, what do you want to do? I want to I ride motorcycles, motor three. I want to be on Estrella Galicia, Leopard, or Patronas. Okay. Okay. What's your 10 year plan? You'll be tw uh, 21 drinking legally in the States. 10 year plan. I know it's, I know it's hard to look, but I know it's hard to look cause you only lived 11 years. So well, yeah, 21, 21, you'll be 21. 21. I want to be on a Yamaha team, like Yamaha, the um, factory team. Okay. I want to be on a factory team when I'm 21. Okay. Now I'm asking you this because w when I'm gone, the way I'm living my life, I'll be gone soon. But uh, ten year plan. I want you to look back at this video and go, "Wow, man, I set these goals." Because I'm a firm believer is you you put it out in the universe and it comes to you. I mean, that's just the way I've lived my life. You say it out loud and you keep saying it out loud, and man, the universe finds a way. However you believe, I don't know what I don't want to get into that, but however you believe, and that's what's going to happen. So that's your ten year plan. Okay. I, I'm like I said, I'm asking you. So, what championships do you want to accomplish? Uh, I want to do, so I really want, like, in two years, I wish when I'm 13, uh -huh. I really want to go to Red Bull's Ricky Cup. Yes. And ETC, which is the European, uh, the European Talent Cup. Yes. And then, like, when I'm 12 next year, I would really like to go to Moto4. Man, I'm 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 supporting you the whole way, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. You know, and you guys know I do. Before we get out of here, anything you want to plug for sponsors or anything? Anything you want to yeah. plug? Sponsors. Any sponsors? Yeah. Uh, what, what is it? Rider. Rider's Law. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so like. Let's Funny story about these guys, real quick. Yeah. So so pl plug real quick. My, Rider's Law. They're uh, motorcycle attorneys uh, based out of SoCal, but they cover riders that have been in accidents all over the states. Uh, so shout out to Riders Law. So actually, when he was seven or eight, we were at um, Laguna Seca yeah. doing a, doing drills, and um, they had a they had a team, a couple of riders and things like that. And they were sponsoring older riders, and the owner came over because he's doing like a demonstration of young riders riding Christian. And the owner came over and was like, "Dude, I love you guys. What are you guys doing here?" And since that point, I think that was four years ago, they, they became one of our our main sponsors just because. They saw him riding, and, and you know we became really good friends. They invited us over to their to their offices and stuff like that. Uh, and today, even today, they're still one of our biggest sponsors. So um, a lot of love for those guys. Riders all is fantastic. If you ride motorcycles in, in, in America and you need some kind of legal support from a riding perspective, shout out to those guys. And, and, and honestly, I can't see why they wouldn't. I mean, when you when they see the focus he has, and like I said, it's beautiful that you're still a kid, but you still see the focus. That's what I'll be like. Oh, this kid's a gold mine. I mean, honestly. I wanted to plug. I, one thing I wanted to, just in case uh, other parents uh, watch this, because I, I get a lot of questions from, from parents asking my, I'm not even joking, my kid's six months old, I want to get him into motorcycles, and like, I just wanted to point out, it didn't, for us, it didn't work like that. Like, yeah. the only reason I went this hard into motorcycling is because of focus. Like you said, when you see, when he was four, five, six, and he's insanely dedicated to training and to racing and you know, when you see a, a six-year-old focus at anything, yes. that's, an, that, that's, that's something that's important to them, and that's something you invest all your time into. And uh, my second son, for instance, he loves motorcycling too, but, but it, it's, more of a, it's, it's more of a, a pat just because it's something we do. So yeah. I'd say for parents that are trying to find out, like, they want to get their kids into motorcycling, if your kid is more obsessed about it than you are, or you see it's something that you don't have to ask them to do, or something that, that they obsess over, then go for that. But if you're doing it and it's it's not something that, that you can really feel their passion for, then keep searching for something else because then you'll end up like Ryan Villapoto, like you said. They'll end up, they'll do all this stuff because they'll have success and they'll be making you proud and all those things. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be a lot of pressure on them. So just if there's parents listening, uh, Follow this path and everything as long as that's that's what your kid shows passion about. And not not because you're 
plugging them full of your own desires. Like you and I, I sure I've influenced the decision. It's not like it was completely like right. hands free, but you know, I don't know, just because it's a lot of sacrifices. It's, it's a really dangerous sport. And like, it's not something you want to do to fulfill your own desire. So just follow your kid's passion. If they get uh, behind it and they're really focused and they're really in love, that should be the indication that this is the thing to do. If not, do it as a hobby, enjoy time writing together, keep it local and keep it fun without adding all the extra stuff. Well, I just wanna... It's like the old it's 70s not... R&B song. If it don't fit, yeah. don't force it, relax and let it flow. Remember that? <laughs> remember that? Yeah, I know man, he didn't exactly. remember that because you weren't even born no, yet. But back in the day, no, we had what we call no, records. Idea. And you have what you call a 45, you put the needle on this thing called a record, and it was a song that goes, if it don't fit, don't force it, relax it, let it fly. I think she was talking about a guy that, anyway, that's not important. Yeah. Like, what is it? And you're, you're that dead. sounds like something weird, like you're going poo or something. Oh, my God. You know what? Seriously, right now, you need to go to bed. Don't fit and don't force it. <laughs> I say, if it don't fit, don't force it. You know what? Uh, you know what? But now that you're 11, you're getting to be you're getting to be that age, okay? You're getting to be that age. You, you, it's not sitting in the corner anymore. It's like, you know what? We're going to have a little talk, son. We're going to have a little talk. <laughs> my belt. But I, I think it's beautiful. And I'm and game before I got here, also, I want, uh, for this, all I want from you guys is an air hole helmet in, in the mail. That's all I want is a... <laughs> I, I, yeah, well, we got a... We, got a oh, we, we sent the arrow helmet, his crash helmet. We sent that back to Arrow. I, um, I love those guys. When I, when I went to Michello... Yeah, yeah that's I, an I, arrow I, helmet right in front of you. So what now? No, that, that's, the, that's an icon. It's icon. Icon, icon. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't even want you saying it. I don't want you to ruin your sponsorship. But I'll say it. It's an icon <laughs> helmet. But I would love an air hole helmet, and I'll uh, give you my address just in case one shows up in the mail. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> but honestly, from the bottom of my heart, man, when you hit me up and you were on the list, I was like, I gotta get this guy on. You know what I mean? I wanted to make sure I had everything right. You know, I wanted everything to get right and then hit you up because I mean, I think your story is incredible and everything you said. I agree wholeheartedly. Let that kid, let that passion come to him. When, it, Like I said, when he's at two, if he's watching faster at two and not getting up and watching, you know, whatever, I, that's when you know, okay, I'm on to something here. And I think and I, BT, I wanted to shout you out as, as well, man, because you've been like, to you, there's, there's probably a core group of, not even, I don't call you guys fans because it's more than that. You know, just you guys fill him up with so much motivation. And like, I know when he, when he closes his visor, when he's chilling, it's, it it's makes him embarrassed a bit when you know when people hey hey man so nice to meet you but like it means a lot for people to really support him the way you do for, from scratch you know from day one for just it, it means a lot to our family yeah uh, because we have made a big sacrifice and stuff like that we're enjoying life but it, it, you know it's been a lot of work but mostly for him it really um, for people that like especially you know wearing the hat and just supporting the way you do man it means a lot and he reads the Instagram uh, messages and stuff like that so. I reached out to you because I saw you do this. I saw you do a couple of episodes yeah. and I was like, I want to talk to BT. And this is, I think our first interview we've done. And I was like, I, you know, I'd like to give that to BT because I know you. Um, I'm the first. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it's our first, we did, we had that one when he was really little, but that, that was, it's, it's different. That was like a, a feature that was made, but this is our first in modern day since he's had, you know, not success, but I mean, since we've had, he's has a presence on the internet, this is a, the first time we've spoken to anybody. And I fi figured since you've, followed him for so long, you know, you'd have some actual intimate experience of what, what he's been through and kind of yes. this whole. Dude, th th this is oh. way overdue, man. This is way, yeah. man, honestly, like I said, man, you're a gold mine. You're a gold, <laughs> the, 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 the synergy between you and your dad, and, and you might not get it now, but take it from somebody who was in your shoes now. I mean, if I had a dad like this, man, you have no idea how great you have it. He knows because, you know, Oh, I, I just I love what you guys are doing. I don't want to get too sappy here, but every one of my interviews, I try to get the positive out of everything because that's what it's about. It's about I try to make this as fun as possible. Maybe I mean you know, we all you know we know what you do, but I want to get in that mental and you know be how you get there to positive and how you stay positive during all the adversity and what you guys are doing and the beautiful family unit you have. It touches me every time I see a post from you. So man, if you don't see me liking your Instagram, it's because maybe I'm in a hurry or I'm on the John and I gotta hurry up and get out of there. Whatever it is, man, trust me, I support you guys wholeheartedly. You go, and I know what time it is in Barcelona, it's time to go eat, I know it is, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much, I support you, and I'm gonna tell everybody to follow him on Instagram, it's RacingKGGR. 
Yeah, they can get your hat. Uh, click on the link. You can get his hat like I do and support this guy. So, hey, man, good luck in the Spanish championship. Remember, always write your goals down and look at them every single day. Jorge Lorenzo says that, and he's right. So write your goals down every day. Look at them before you go to bed, and then when you wake up, look at them and let the universe take care of itself. Thank you guys so much, man. God bless you, man, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. And like I say about this time all the time, <laughs> Letter BT, thank you so much, man. Bye. Ciao. You guys rock, man. Thank you. <laughs>